today I'm coming at you to talk about body dysmorphia, which is something that I have struggled with for a long time. Um, and mostly it's linked to my eating disorder, mostly it's about my body, my weight, you know, I'm losing weight, I'm gaining weight, I feel like I can't see it, or I feel like I'm ballooning and I'm huge. Um, but it extends further than that. And when I look back and in retrospect, I see that there have been things that I've had an obsessive need to change about myself and I have not been able to see um, the truth or what other people see to be the truth or whatever it is because it's a very confusing disorder, it's very confusing because even though I am not, you know, I don't have the best vision, I have glasses and if you follow me on Instagram you'll see that even after two years of glasses my eyes have got worse. But yeah, even though I do wear glasses, I'm not blind, not quite, um, although I'm filming this and I can see myself and it's just kind of a blur, but whatever, whatever, my eyesight isn't great, but that is not the point, that is not what body dysmorphia is, body dysmorphia is not having dodgy eyes, it is having a dodgy brain, my brain is not sending me the images and signals that I need to see reality, because I can't see reality, and it is confusing because I can look at other people and I can see how other people look and see them for who they are and see a, you know, a complete visual of other people and it's correct and it's what they look like. Um, but when it comes to me, I have, I have no idea. I don't know why I have mirrors because what's the point? I have no idea what I look like. So I remember when I first started straightening my hair, so I was 15, no. 13, I was about 13, 14 when I first started straightening my hair and then it kind of escalated and I was straightening it every day and I was obsessed, obsessed with the fact that my hair was frizzy and it wasn't, it wasn't at all. My mum was saying, you know, you need to stop because your hair's not frizzy but it is going to fall out, you're going to be bored soon and I would straighten my hair like four times a day because of this frizz that I could see and it became like a debilitating obsession because I would like get really upset when I was out because I couldn't straighten little bits of frizz out of my hair and I ended up having to buy like these portable straighteners that didn't that had a battery so I could straighten my hair while I was out and it did cause massive damage to my hair and and to my well-being and everything because I was obsessed with this thing that wasn't there. I have been obsessively wanting a nose job since I was about eight years old. I thought my nose was just disgusting. My nose took up so much of my face. I had a nose like a gorilla and it was awful. And it wasn't until I did the work with the media and I had a makeup artist who was going, oh, you have such a little beautiful nose. I was like, wow, maybe maybe my nose isn't huge. And it, I, I did loads of these like practicing, um, you know, medita meditation sessions about my nose to kind of convince me that it was okay. But still, when I look in the mirror, I'm like, wow, I wish I wore makeup. I wish I could contour my huge nose to be, to be smaller because it's gross. I am obsessed with my cheekbones and I can't, I can't see them and it upsets me and people compliment me on my cheekbones all the time and I'm like well you know you can't see them so I don't know what you're talking about. It wasn't until I lost loads of weight um, last year that I finally saw some cheekbones but you know that's not helpful having a BMI of 10 does not you know, I can't have a BMI of 10 forever just so I can see my cheekbones. That is completely ridiculous. But my dysmorphia is like, oh, well, you know, if that's what you want to see, that's what you've got to do. And I've gained weight and I'm still gaining. And it's just, I've gone back to, to hating my face. My face, I look in the mirror and I just hate everything about my face and I want to change it. And I can't. I can't and I've accepted that I can't and I've accepted that part of it is an illness and there's nothing I can do about it but it's debilitating to sit in front of the mirror for hours after my children have gone to bed and pick apart everything I see about myself because I hate it, I hate it. But then knowing rationally or trying to know rationally that maybe that's not true. When I lost weight, I couldn't see it. Now I'm gaining weight, I feel that I am back to normal and 
it's basically impossible to tell me that I'm not back to normal. No matter what anybody says, I'm like, no, this is what I look like. I don't need to gain any more weight because in my head, my eyes, I can't, I can't see. And I, I don't know whether people are lying or whether my, my mind is lying. And I don't know whether people are saying, you know, well, you look okay now, but you need to gain more you know, just that bit of cushion, just in case everything goes wrong again. Whether it's like, you know, like a lie to help me. And it makes me really mistrust people. It makes me paranoid. It makes me angry. It makes me resentful. This dysmorphia, this illness that makes me see things that aren't true, makes me a paranoid, mistrustful, manipulative, scared, resentful person. Because I feel like I'm going mad. Every day I feel like I'm going mad. And I mean, some days it's not so bad. Some days I can get dressed and I can wash my face and draw some eyebrows on and fill my eyebrows in and go. Like, you know, I, this is what I did today. I washed my face, I took a gross hairband out of my hair, drew some eyebrows on and I'm sitting to make a video. And I've been able to do that today, but it is a rare occasion that I don't have to jump over about 20 hurdles in the morning just to leave the house because of this monstrous way I feel I look. Then it feeds my eating disorder because it gives me a reason to strive for change. And when I can't see how I look, my eating disorder can run wild and do whatever it wants to do and that is generally something that's very destructive and so even though I hate everything about how I look and I don't trust people when they say that it's my head and then I know it's my head and it makes me hate everything about my head and my brain and the way I think I have to deal with it and live with it because I can't have a BMI of 10 just to be happy with my cheekbones can't afford surgery to, I don't know, suck the, the flesh out of my face. <laughs> I don't know. I think actually my dysmorphia is something that I struggle with with YouTube a lot because I can see myself-ish or I haven't got my glasses on so I can see a blurry vision of myself and I'm looking at myself and I'm like, I hate my hair, I wish my hair was longer and, and I am growing it so, but it makes me want to go get extensions which is really bad and it'll ruin my hair but it makes me want to get extensions. I'm looking at my arms and I'm thinking, oh my god, they're huge. Everyone's going to be judging me for being a huge blob on YouTube. <laughs> I sit here making these videos, watching myself on the screen, just like, oh no, oh no, this is terrible. And I, I spend about half an hour making a video to edit it down. Um, and it's just a really traumatic experience. Because <laughs> I hate everything. Oh. Okay, so I am going to stop picking myself apart because I realised as well as talking about my dysmorphia and how debilitating it is and how much I hate myself, it's actually possibly quite triggering for people and it's really difficult to talk about something like dysmorphia without talking about how it makes me feel and how it makes me feel is horrible and awful but I don't want to make other people feel horrible and awful as well so I'm going to end that part, wow, well, and um, go on to the bit that is what is dysmorphia anyway. Body dysmorphia is an anxiety disorder linked to obsessive thoughts about body image and how a person looks. Sufferers experience obsessive worries about perceived flaws that only they can see. Nobody else can see them because generally they're not there. And they can develop obsessive compulsions to change things that they see. It can be an incredibly isolating disorder because it breeds mistrust and it breeds paranoia because you don't know whether you can't trust yourself or you can't trust other people. It definitely varies from person to person. Some people like me can get on with their life even if it means an hour crying in front of the mirror about my nose, my cheekbones, my size, whatever. But for other people it can be completely isolating and debilitating because they feel like they're so monstrous that they can't see, be seen and they can't leave the house. Although it changes from person to person, some common signs of body dysmorphia is that the person feels that they are out of proportion, that they're too big, too small, disfigured or they're not in symmetry. It can affect any area of your body, from your body as a whole, your torso, specific things like your hands, your hair, your teeth and your skin. Body dysmorphia is massively linked to eating disorders, whether it's a cause or an effect, and it can really change how a person goes through their eating disorder and through their recovery. 
Common compulsive behaviours include obsessively checking our appearance in mirrors or just avoiding them completely, using heavy makeup to disguise disfigurements that you, the person feels that they have, either changing your posture or your clothes to hide something that you perceive that is there but isn't, obsessive exercising to try and change your body, frequent body checking with mostly with your hands, you know, feeling how things, how things feel, the size of things, are you in symmetry, are you not? Frequent weighing of yourself, excessively brushing or styling your hair throughout the day. Seeking cosmetic surgery to try and change the things that you perceive are wrong with yourself. And constantly comparing yourself to other people, whether it's mag models in magazines or your friends or people you, who you see walking down the street. For everybody, body dysmorphia is caused by different things. For some people, we just don't know why, but there are other causes that it can be attributed to, like low self-esteem, bullying and fear or worries or generalised anxiety. The most common form of treatment for body dysmorphia is cognitive behavioural therapy and it does work. It works for so many people, although there are alternatives if it doesn't work or if you feel like it's not for you. The most common of those is exposure therapy, exposing the sufferer to the things that they perceive are wrong with them and finding ways to deal with it. People sometimes are also prescribed antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication and a lot of the time that helps because it dulls the anxiety that you feel in response to your dysmorphia and as dysmorphia is an anxiety disorder, anxiety medication can be incredibly helpful. Self-care is a massive, massive help when you have body dysmorphia. Doing things that mean that you can love your body and love your face or love whoever you are for things that are not attributed to how you look. Exercising, eating well, drinking water, making sure that you are looking after yourself, feeding yourself, nourishing yourself, moving your body. Making progress in yoga has helped me so much because I can hate every single other thing about myself. But when I can do a handstand in a scorpion, flow really beautifully, that is something that my body is doing. And it doesn't matter what I look like because I can do that. Self-care is a massive help and doing things Especially when you're moving your body and your body is doing things that it doesn't matter how your body looks. It doesn't matter because it's doing something and that is a massive help. And when you have body dysmorphia, looking after yourself is so important because it makes you hate yourself and it makes you not want to look after yourself because you don't want to have a bath because you can't stand to be naked or you don't want to exercise because you don't like how your body looks or you don't want to wash your face because you think your skin is awful already. Tackling that on a daily basis and looking after yourself can be second to none as far as helping yourself and moving forward. Getting support for body dysmorphia can be really difficult because it's very isolating and a lot of people don't understand. If you can get support from your family and your friends, that is massive and it's amazing, but a lot of people can't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop some links I could have moved my last video into the box down there and you can check them out. There are some links just for body dysmorphia support groups and support anywhere, whether it's your family, your friends, online, in a help group. Support is life changing because suddenly you don't feel alone and loneliness, isolation, guilt for isolating yourself, they all just feed into the anxiety and as the anxiety is the cause of the dysmorphia, you can feel guilty about failing a test and the next day you'll wake up and want to tear your skin off because any guilt that feeds anxiety will feed the dysmorphia and it doesn't have to make sense. A lot of mental health doesn't make sense. That's what I've learned. That is the biggest thing that I have learned in my life. Mental health doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that I'm, you know, half blind but I can see and then I can't see. It doesn't make sense. And so having support through something that is so confusing and so isolating is so important. And so I'm gonna pop the links and hopefully they can be of some help. So that is the end of this video. And I thought it was really short and it wasn't. And I apologize now and I'm gonna put a trigger warning in the thing because I know that talking about how this body dysmorphia affects me can be a pretty hard thing to listen to, especially if you're dealing with your own issues and so I'm sorry if this is a triggering video of any sort um but yeah so I apologize now and I'm gonna put a trigger warning in the thing and I only have one video left to do and it is anxiety and I left it till last because body dysmorphia links to anxiety and that's gonna come soon yeah so I hope you guys um 
have good lighting like I do. Um, have sunshine, have light, and I hope you have a really, really, really good day, whatever you're doing.